This year, I spent over $37,000 buying books to flip back on Amazon. I bought all of those books on online marketplaces, including Amazon, and I expect to net a profit of $68,000. Now, the only reason why I actually know that is because I'm tracking all the inventory. I'm tracking all the books that I purchase on all these different marketplaces. And you'll find out really quickly in this business that if you ever try to do online arbitrage, knowing your numbers is very, very important. What's up, everybody? I'm Joji. I'm a full-time high school teacher and a part-time Amazon FBA bookseller. And if if you watch any of my YouTube videos, you know that I specifically like to buy books. I like to buy them on online marketplaces like Amazon, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, Craigslist, Mercari, a whole bunch of different places and flip them right back on Amazon for a profit. And the reason why I do online arbitrage is because, again, I'm a full-time teacher, so I'm basically working every day. And when I come home at night, I don't really want to go out thrifting, going to garage sales. I don't want to go to library sales. I kind of just want to chill at home spend maybe an hour or two a day on the business and buy some books online and flip them online. And the goal of this video is just to show you how I track the inventory and how I track the books that I buy and, and kind of break down sort of how many books I've purchased, how much I've spent, the average buy cost, and try to explain to you why I think you should be doing it, why it's important. And then lastly, actually give you the same spreadsheet that I'm using. I'm going to link it down in the description below. So it's just going to be a Google sheet that's view only if you want to use it you can go ahead and make a copy and decide to use it in your own business. All right, the first reason why tracking is important is because you have to know how much money you've spent. There's so many people who spend money on inventory and have absolutely no idea how much money they're spending. And if you start tracking what you're buying, you actually will know pretty easily how much money that you spent. So for example, I've spent in this year since February when I started buying books, 37000 $620. And while, you know, I may have forgot to include a book here or there, it's probably plus or minus like, you know, that, you know, 500 or a thousand dollars. But the point is I have a pretty good idea of how much money that I've spent. Okay. The second reason why you should be tracking is so that you know what your average buy cost is and also what your average sales price is. So if I go back to my inventory spreadsheet, you can see that I've purchased 1,313 books and the average book cost is $28.65. The average sell price is $103.88. So just because I have this data, it's really easy for me to tell that I should be profitable in this business if every book that I buy on average is $28 and every book that I sell on average is $103. Like That's a pretty significant margin, so I should be making profit. But while knowing the average buy cost and average sales price is important, it's also pretty important to know what your profit and loss is on any individual item and also to know like what the return on investment or the ROI is on any book. So if I go back to my spreadsheet, you can see that if I scroll over here to the left, I basically track by starting with the date that I purchased the item, kind of the platform that I bought it from. I go ahead and write uh, type out the ISBN number so I can identify the book. I also here have received by one prep. So that's the prep center that I use. Um, if you see yes, O side, that means I actually didn't ship it to my prep center. I shipped it to my own own a house because I want to inspect it for some other reason. But then I also have the book name there and I have it linked in some cases to the actual um, the actual page, the quantity that I purchased and the purchase price, the order total, because sometimes I'll buy more than just one quantity, um, whether or not it got delivered, the date that it was delivered, the tracking number, the date that it was sold, the sales price, the proceeds after fees, the fees paid, the profit loss, and then finally the ROI. So basically, whenever I buy a book, I'm simply just inputting this information. What was the date? Where did I buy it from? What exactly is the book? The ISBN number? How much did I buy it for? And then once it's actually listed on Amazon and it does sell, all I simply need to do is come over here and, and type out what when did it sell? Like what was the date that it sold? What did it sell for? What did Amazon give me in terms of a check back? Like how much money did Amazon give me? That would automatically calculate the fees paid. And then this conditional formatting is just going to change the cell green if it's a positive number. In other words, if I actually profited, same thing with the ROI. And you'll see that for a lot of these, they're all, you know, these cells are red. That's because these are books that I purchased that have not sold. So you might actually look at this first book, this pre calculus book that I bought. And is it, that was actually, you know, not a good buy considering that I bought that all the way back in January and it still hasn't sold yet. But let me just show you how this would kind of work is, okay, let's say this book in particular, let's say it sold today, like let's say 930, 2022. I just enter that in and let's say it sold for 115. I'd put 115 in. And let's say the, the proceeds after fees, like what Amazon gave me back in terms of a paycheck was $85, then it would automatically calculate, okay, what's the profit or loss and what's the return on investment? Now, obviously I didn't actually sell this book, so I have to leave that. But the point is, it's important not only to know what the average buy cost and the average sell price is once you kind of average everything out at the end, but 
to know specifically on you know which books have you actually made money on versus which books have you lost money on. And if I go back, you know, to my spreadsheet, because again, I have you know well over a thousand books here. I have a thousand cells if I were to scroll down. We have many, 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 many books that you see, you know, there's a lot of red and those are books that have not sold for me. And I should probably go back and figure out like, why haven't they sold? Is there a problem with them? Should I lower the price that they're listed on Amazon? And it's kind of just gives you some insight into, you know, what books are selling and what are not. Now, on the other hand, you also see a lot of green. And again, a lot of green is profit. And um, where I kind of get these average, you know, sell price and average proceeds is based upon the books that have sold. So obviously not every book that I have here is sold because there are a lot of red cells, but based on the books that have sold, the average um, sell price is $103. The average proceeds after fees is $81 and the average profit is $52. Now to get my projected revenue, what I do then is just take the average profit per book, uh, actually this is for the projected profit, is I take the average profit per book and multiply that by the number of books that I purchased. To get the projected revenue, I just take the number of books that I purchased and multiply by the sell price. And you know, obviously that's not a perfect estimate because it's unlikely that every book that I buy, I buy will sell. But obviously my intention is that every book that I buy would sell. And so, you know, the goal is that eventually everything that you see here on the spreadsheet will, will eventually have turned green. But obviously that's not true this, this second, this moment. But one cool thing you could do with this information once you have it is you can, you know, just look at any of these columns and kind of look at the sum. And so you can see for the sales price, basically from what I have listed here, in terms of like what I've actually entered in the spreadsheet, the sum of the sales is 57,000. So that would be like, that's how much I've sold in books. That's the the actual um, revenue, right? Then you can see what did I get paid for? What would I get paid back from Amazon is in terms of a check? Like after all the fees Amazon had, has taken out, what did I actually get? What did I receive back? It's 44,000. So you can say, well, if I received $44,000 back, and I've spent $37,000 and really the profit that I've made should be somewhere in between that, right? But again, something that you have to realize is that a lot of these books that are read are books that are still in inventory and haven't sold, which means that, right, the difference between this $44,000 and what I project the proceeds to be $106,000 is just inventory that's sitting waiting to sell. But it's still good to know because it's like, am I really profitable? Well, you could argue that I'm really not very profitable. I've spent $37,000. I've only returned back so far $44,000. But again, just tracking this is a good way to see you know, where you're at in your business. I could also look at fees paid. I've paid Amazon $12,456. And again, if you look at the profit loss, this, this 6969 that's the difference between um, the profit uh, proceeds that I've been, uh, that Amazon's given me and the actual amount of money that I've spent. Okay. Another reason why you should really be tracking your books is so that you know what the average time is to sell your book. So if I go back to my actual spreadsheet here, you can see that oh, the right one that I am tracking when I purchased the book as well as when the book sold. And I, in a, you know, ideally what I should also have is another column that automatically calculates the number of days between those two times to let me know. And that's probably something that I should do in the future to improve the spreadsheet. But the point is knowing how long it takes your books to sell is pretty important because at the end of the day, you're investing money into what should be an asset. That should be something that's going to make you money, right? But one thing you have to consider is how long is it going to take you to actually re to get a return on that, you know, on that investment. If it takes two years to get your money back or to make profit, obviously it's not as good as something that takes only three months. Um, uh, on the same hand, it's like maybe you're willing to wait a longer period of time to get a higher return, or maybe you're willing to take a really low return if you can sell it within a month or two months. So it's just something that's helpful to know, okay, well, how long does it take to sell the books? Um, or even, you know, you might not, not even have books that are selling. Like for example, the, a couple of these books that you saw up here, they haven't even sold yet. So if I bought them last January, right, we're going on basically what, nine months that these books have not sold. So that's, you know, it's definitely useful information that I can use to help better my business in the future. Okay, the last reason why I think you should really be tracking your books is so that you can figure out which sources are most profitable and do more of that and then figure out which sources are least profitable and do less of that. So again, you can see that on the platform here, I have a number of different platforms. Like I have eBay, I have Biblio, I have Amazon, I have some Facebook Marketplace, I have um, 
I have OfferUp, Craigslist. I have a whole bunch of different platforms. And what you could do, again, I'm not that advanced with the spreadsheet yet, but what you could do with that is take each platform and look at the sales amongst those platforms and figure out, okay, which platform is actually doing better for me and which one is not doing that great. And the goal there is, well, whatever you figure out works the best, then you should do more of that because that's what's making most of your money. And whatever is not doing well, maybe you should stop doing that because it's wasting your time and you're really not making much money on it. All right. I hope this video was helpful in some way. I feel like I'm kind of just talking about a whole bunch of stuff. I'm probably like information overloading a lot of you. But I kind of just want to give you some insight into the way that I track my books. And obviously, it's not ideal. Like, there's probably a much easier, much better, more efficient way to track books. So if you have any ideas or you want to share how you do it in your business, how you can do it better, let me know because I'd definitely be interested in it. But with that said, if you like the spreadsheet that I use, feel free to take this free one that I'm going to link down in the description below. Um, I'm going to go ahead. It's basically going to be a Google sheet that at the bottom is going to have three tabs. I'm going to have... Amazon inventory uh, 2022. So what you could do is, as an example, just you know, for the first sort, sort of books that you uh, start buying, you can put their date, the platform that you bought them on, their ISBN, whether or not you received them, their name, quantity, the purchase price. And then basically everything else is just going to auto-calculate. And as an example, I went ahead and filled out like, you know, I'm assuming that for the people watching my videos, probably most of you aren't doing online arbitrage for books. A lot of you are probably just buying books from thrift stores, library sales, bulk buys, stuff like that. And that's nothing's wrong with that. It's completely fine. Um, so the point of me saying that is if you don't or if you're not really sourcing off of those sites, you might instead say like, oh, a specific library or a Goodwill or you know, next door Craigslist, you might have, you know, things that are not exactly just, um, you know, online marketplaces like me. So here are just some examples of how you could use it. You could just put the platform in, the date, you know, ISBN, whether or not you received it. And like I said, everything else is going to auto calculate and let you know if you're profitable or not. And basically everything's going to work out here um, when you start adding information. And like, like, let's say, for example, this book here, let's say you did receive it. It's sold, I don't know, let's just say it's sold on 4.7. And it was a sales price of 125 and after fees that was 95 like it automatically is going to calculate the profit loss the roi and then it's going to come over here as far as like uh being used to calculate average book cost sell price proceeds average profit and basically everything that you need to know about your business from like just a very general you know outlook point um it's not Super, super detailed, but it's there if it's valuable to you. So, um, and then one last thing is I also included business business expenses. So you could also use this same spreadsheet to you know type in any business expenses, and those could tally up over time to make taxes a little bit easier. So I don't know what I'm doing with this video. This video is kind of just like a sort of snapshot into how I run or how how I kind of track the books that I buy in my business. It's not perfect. So if you have any suggestions on how to make it better or you have a better way to do it, let me know. But that's all I have for you today. If you want to learn how to flip books from online marketplaces like Amazon and eBay, Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, then check out this other video here because I'll show you just how I do that.